I'm so glad you could join me. My name is Pixie. I make videos about art and books. And I am taking the time to film an intro to this vlog now that I have makeup on because that does not happen often. And I think it makes me look nice. I've realized that makeup is mostly just adding contrast to your face, which is very helpful because that is also a great way to enhance your drawings more contrast makes it look better and more professional so that's a, a free tip <laughs> I guess <laughs> yeah anyway welcome and before we get into it a big massive thank you to my patrons for supporting these videos and my art and my life I greatly greatly appreciate it I moved my desk back to the window it was a nice idea to have the desk next to my bookshelf with all my art books but it, there just wasn't enough daylight and I also feel like I haven't gotten a ton of work done since I've had my desk over here. Now obviously that's because I've been burned out and going through stuff but I just have so many fond memories of making work I really like with my desk in this position that I, it feels right and it's also just gonna be better lighting for videos because I just didn't get enough daylight so I'm excited to be back here by the by the window hi it's voiceover pixie here how have you been doing so my winter as I said has been a bit of a struggle but it's been a struggle in a way where I feel like it's setting me up for future better things. So I've mostly had a lot of health stuff going on, but one of the things which is actually huge is that I applied for uh, disability support. It's called like housing support, I think is how you would translate it. And what they do is they come to your house and kind of body double with you so they don't do any tasks for you, but they kind of support you, help you get started in doing them yourself. So when you talk about like low support needs, autistics, for example, that's kind of a low support need because you live independently, but a few hours a week you have a bit of support. And I applied for that because my doctor told me to. I didn't think I was going to get it because I'm so used to like not being believed and being dismissed by healthcare professionals. But I guess the social services have suffered slightly less cuts than psychiatry. And they <laughs> believed me. And I have now just started to receive this support. So that's something really positive. And I'm really hoping it's going to mean that I can manage my whole life a bit better because yeah I, I struggle <laughs> with managing daily life and doing everything I need to do and also everything I want to do and by things I want to do I mean being politically active and also making art on top of like the very basic life things like you know feeding myself and such so anyway, that's a really big development in my life that I am really happy and optimistic about. I really hope that it's going to help in the long run. Now that we're in the beginning, I'm still kind of overwhelmed and kind of exhausted by it. But hopefully, hopefully that will get better. But it also just feels so validating and such a relief to finally have someone with actual power take me seriously like people a few people have taken me seriously but it's always been people who don't have that much actual power to change my situation in any way and the gatekeepers have been the ones to dismiss me so it feels really great that i have been taken seriously by people who have then been actually able to help me in a real way. When it comes to art, I've been focusing a lot on my sketchbook, which you see me drawing in it here, because I asked myself the question a while ago what I would do and make if money 
wasn't a consideration. And just having fun in my sketchbook is like the, a main art thing that I would do if I didn't have to worry about money. So I have been focusing on that and it's been really, really fun. And I really love this sketchbook. Not that all the drawings are amazing, but they just remind me of the fun times I had. So I, I have this toilet paper roll here because I want to build a still life about the recession and inflation that we are all suffering through right now because toilet paper has gotten so expensive and it pisses me off. Um, but I haven't decided what else to put in it. The tools are out because I'm working on a different thing. Hold on. Let me show you this piece that by the time you see this will have been sent out as a sticker to my patrons for March. I was gonna do a completely different thing for for the March Patreon sticker. I wanted to do something for International Working Women's Day, but um, I ended up going with this and I made the stickers and then I was like, this does not feel right because I feel like a propaganda piece like that should be used to raise money for the international. But you can see I was really struggling to like do a sort of uh, revolutionary women's struggle piece. Um, I do really like this one that I ended up with, but it's just, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking the whole, like what I should make money off of. It's possible that I overthink things. It's kind of something I do. But I just didn't have time to work through all that before I had to make a decision. So I just did another design and I really like this hard design because I feel like it speaks to how love and solidarity and passion for things is multifaceted and is useful for many different reasons. Like love is not a luxury, it is something that is necessary and something we need to survive. Like it has uses and, um, you know, humanity needs cooperation to sustain ourselves. We are dependent on each other, even, even in capitalism where we are so like hyper individualized we need a lot of people to make our lives work and there is something really beautiful in that so that's what that piece is kind of about so art and politics on the internet is something that i think a lot about and right now i'm pretty happy with how i try to strike the balance that i want but i'm always open to uh, changing that if i like change what I think is best. But the way I'm reasoning about it is that because I need to make money from posting online, I don't want to make politics my main focus of what I post about. Because if you depend on your online presence for income and your presence is built around your politics, that is incentive to change your opinions based on what is most popular. And that is not necessarily the way to maintain a correct revolutionary politics that will actually in the long run help us overthrow capitalism and end all oppression. I do, however, feel that it's necessary to be open about being a Marxist so people know when they get curious about Marxism, I'm someone they can come to, if they so choose. So that's kind of the balance that I'm trying to strike. I also don't really feel like I have anything to prove on the internet, because I am active in real life in an organization, in an international, as much as I possibly can be, and sometimes even too much, because I get excited, because I'm very passionate about this, obviously. And so I will overextend myself sometimes and have to rest a little bit. That's definitely another balance to strike. Regarding art and politics, 
I find myself often searching for ways to depict revolutionary optimism without necessarily making an explicit propaganda piece like this one because I feel that art has the potential to do and be a lot of different things and I think it should be and do all of the things that it is capable of including the things by the way that I don't personally like like postmodern conceptual art I personally hate that but it still does exist for a reason and there is no point trying to like say it shouldn't exist it has developed in certain historical conditions for reasons and people make it for a reason even if that reason is sometimes money laundering <laughs> the communist playwright Bertolt Brecht said once that art isn't a mirror to reflect reality but a hammer with which to shape it and I actually don't entirely agree with that partly because art is not a driving force in society so I don't think you can shape reality with art I do also think that reflecting reality is one of the many valid uses that art has and it is completely fine to use it in that way and that is also something that I do quite a lot actually art is a way to process and to sit with your reality and come to a greater understanding of it and I think that's really important to do sometimes oh look at this lovely sun moment in the studio I just cannot wait for spring. I'm so ready for winter to be over. Unfortunately, uh, I'm at the end of March now recording this voiceover and it's still really cold. And we had snow just the other day. I just really want spring and summer and feel warm. Have warm feet again. Can you imagine warm feet? And also less dry skin. Speaking of skin, I started a skincare routine recently. Yes, for the first time in my almost 33 years of life. I've kind of almost gotten away with not having one because my skin is fairly unproblematic, but it is a bit dry and I'll break out when like my hormones fluctuate due to periods. But recently I just got sick of the dryness of my face because it's a really unpleasant sensory experience and so I figured out I did a ton of research and I gotta say there's so much bullshit in the skincare industry but anyway I figured out a routine with only two products I'll do a cleanser and then I do a moisturizer and it's been working really well and it feels really nice to have moisturized skin so that's a fun new part of my life I was I have been like hesitant to do it because it's always seemed super overwhelming but with these two things that are pretty easy to do I feel fine this was a fun surprise I got when I tried to go for a walk one day the path is completely flooded so I had to find another way to take a walk there was no crossing there here I am about to paint my toilet paper still life. So something I've been working with with my art is, or working on I should say, is painting looser, which is looser and more expressive, which is sadly not as easy as it looks, but the process is really enjoyable. So I've been having a lot of fun with that recently. So this was largely inspired by a TikTok I saw of two girls talking about coping with the recession by uh, instead of admitting that they are forced to make certain choices due to economic necessity, instead calling it an aesthetic. It's a recession core, <laughs> such as having to eat beans and rice because that's cheap. It's part of the recession core aesthetic. And obviously it's like meant to be a joke and it is funny, but to me, it also speaks to the 
indomitable human spirit. Because genuinely, we will find ways to cope with hardships in like whatever way we can. And sometimes that is by making up an aesthetic. And sometimes it is by like making jokes about super tragic events that have happened to us. Humans in general are just extremely adaptable. Like we will find ways to survive. And I'm not saying they're always like healthy or aspirational or whatever, but the sheer like tenacity we can have as a species for staying alive and making it through and even having a good time despite all the bullshit that gets thrown at us and also just our drive for autonomy like because calling it an aesthetic the recession really speaks to our desire to have control over our lives something capitalism robs us of and I don't know, it just really touches me the way people will strive to find some kind of independence and choice and control over their situation. Something else I thought about regarding this piece is how three years ago at the start of the Panini, people were also paint painting and drawing toilet paper, but for a different reason, because I'm sure you remember but people were stocking up on toilet paper and that was like an, a sought after resource. And now I am painting it for a different reason, namely the price hike in like percentage is just absolutely ridiculous. I'm not good at maths, so I'm not gonna say how many percent the price has gone up by because I would, I would say it wrong, but it's a lot. And that enrages me. I also want to circle back to the thing about art being a mirror or a hammer. And the thing is, is that I painted this because it spoke to me. And it's something I had a genuine feeling about. And I think art really needs to do that. Be genuine and speak to a human experience. And sort of yeah come come from a genuine place and it's not really up to anyone <laughs> no matter if they're a conservative politician or just a communist revolutionary to dictate what artists should or should not do that is something trotsky the russian revolutionary says that it's not up to the revolutionary party to tell artists what to make but it is up to the Revolutionary Party to have politics that will enable artists the greatest amount of freedom, which obviously includes like access to resources and stuff like that. Letting your passion guide you as an artist, I think is extra important now when people are talking about like the race of artificial intelligence, quote unquote, and AI art, like, Art is actually about more than making pretty images. It's about connection between human beings and that can't really be replaced or replicated. Let's do a reading update. This is my currently reading stack. I haven't read these two since the summer. Reason and Revolt because we started up reading groups again with comrades and then that obviously takes precedent. Pride I have no excuse, I just haven't read it. Paradise Lost, I was last reading in October. I just need some self-discipline to read it, and since then I have needed that self-discipline for more urgent tasks, like doing the dishes. <laughs> um, then we have the letters of Vincent van Gogh. I'm like a quarter of the way into it. And it's only just now starting to get interesting. But I'm taking my time with it because it's, it's more of a like perusing kind of book than uh, devouring. And then my mom took me and my grandma to see Cabaret, the musical. So I had to get goodbye to Berlin, of course. 
and it's all shiny and I really like it. I started reading it um, and then I had to stop because there was probably some Marxist theory that I need to read. And then of course, Nona the Ninth, my signed, ah, signed copy. Let me show you. This is not easy. Mm. Look, I, um, this was more money than I could actually spend, but it was signed. I had to. I was originally planning to wait to get that until it comes out in paperback because my other Locktomb books are in paperback and I want them to match on my shelf. But, I mean, come on. It's, it's signed. Like how... It's so rare to have a signed book. So, yeah. And I feel kind of bad that I'm still only this far into it. I am just kind of stressed and uh, distracted in my little brain. So that's what's going on with that. But I'm really liking it so far. Nona is an incredible character. No spoilers. Just, I'm, I'm very confused, which excites me, because that's what I'm looking for in the locked tomb. Um, and also, like, gay shenanigans. So, I am still mostly reading Lord of the Rings, because I am still in that one-track mind where I just, I only care about Samwise Gamgee and nothing else. <laughs> That's not entirely true. I care about a lot of things in Middle-earth, but Sam might be my favorite character, is what I have learned by reading the trilogy six times in a row. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. It was really nice to have you. And if you haven't already, like the video. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Also, on my Patreon, I have a ton of exclusive videos, including over 20 sketchbook tours. So that's really fun. Anyway, until I see you next time, Take care of yourself, and I'll see you then. Bye.